G'day mates. What I'm about to show you will scare you to death and hopefully save you from it. Our story begins way back in 1988 when researchers from Wisconsin invited a random community sample of 1,500 men and women aged between 30 to 60 to participate in an overnight sleep test. 18 years later, the researchers studied the mortality rate of those original 1,500 participants and the results will take your breath away. Let's have a look. So this chart here illustrates the decrease in survival with increasing apnea severity, and I'll break it down for you. So along the X axis, we have the years of follow up. These are the years of the study and along the Y axis, your percentage chance of survival. <laughs> and these lines here, the chart lines, these are the participants and the severity of their apnea. So you can see here, apnea hypopnea index less than five, no apnea, AHI five to 15, this is mild apnea, AHI 15 to 30, moderate apnea, and AHI more than 30, severe apnea. AHI is the apnea hypopnea index, for those new to the channel, how many apneas and hypopneas a participant is having on an hourly basis. Now on the chart, we can clearly see for the first 10 or so years, this period up here, there's not a huge difference in the mortality rate between the various subgroups. They're pretty close together. However, after 12 or so years, the apnea reaper comes a calling and your time is up. Check this out. Have a look at the drop in survival rate of those participants with severe apnea. Look at it, just falls off a cliff right down here to 65%. So those of you watching right now with untreated severe apnea, your chances of surviving the next 18 years are about 65%. I don't like those odds and they're about to get a lot worse. Check this out. So this here is essentially the same chart, just excluding 126 participants who reported using a CPAP machine. So when we take out those participants who are treating their sleep apnea, the survival chances drop even further. Look at this, down to 55% for the severe category. Flip a coin, guys. Flip a coin to see if you survive the next 16 years. And even then, have a look at the moderate and mild. There's still a big reduction in survival from the baseline here, those patients with no apnea. And the conclusion reads, participants with severe apnea had a statistically significant threefold greater risk of all-cause mortality than those without apnea. Given the inevitable increase in apnea prevalence with the epidemic of obesity, the four to five fold increase in all cause and cardiovascular mortality associated with untreated severe apnea is of high concern. And I want to follow up on that last point. We know there's a big correlation between apnea severity and weight. Undeniable. Now, back when this study was released during that study period, obesity rates were between 30 to 34%. They're now 42% and climbing at a very, very fast rate. So what I'm saying here is there's a good chance this study, as disturbing as it is, is an underestimation when it comes to those survival rates. Now, before we finish up, I wanna show you how CPAP therapy can add 10 years to your life and not only that, improve the quality of your life. So you're not a grumpy old prick all the time and you can enjoy life, play with your kids, exercise, do all the fun stuff. Now these results are from a mate of mine, Chris, who messaged me in despair. We did a sleep test on him and then set him up with a CPAP machine. Here's the results prior and after CPAP therapy. Now for those of you watching with untreated sleep apnea, perhaps you've tried CPAP before and given up for whatever reason, Pay close attention right now because these results here are incredible and hopefully they encourage you to get back on the mask, if you know what I mean. So this is Apple sleep cycle data come, coming directly from Chris's watch. And it's just remarkable. Over here, we have the 7th of March. This is the night he did the test. And here is the 9th of March, his first night with a CPAP machine. 
And let's go through the difference. So you can see here, time in bed, eight hours and 45 minutes. Time asleep, five hours and 15 minutes. Now, as far as Chris is aware, he's asleep the whole time. He doesn't remember waking up, but the watch is showing he only slept for five hours and 15 minutes. And that's because he has, see all this red here? These are all his sleep disturbances, his interruptions because of his apnea, his breathing. This is his brain waking up out of sleep to tell him to breathe so he doesn't die. And you can see here, awake two hours and 45 minutes. REM sleep, he had 18 minutes of REM sleep. These little light blue sections here, that's his REM sleep. He's not doing any dreaming. He can't get into good REM sleep. Core sleep, four hours and 57 minutes. And deep sleep, zero minutes. Donuts, no deep sleep. Now let's juxtapose that with his very first night of CPAP therapy. And I can just imagine his brain and his body just having the most amazing sleep. It's the first time in years just having a proper sleep and have a look at it. Eight hours and 58 minutes time in bed. Time of sleep, eight hours and 24 minutes. Look at the difference in the awake periods, all the red. He's only got two little awake periods and they're associated with REM, which is what we normally see. Now let's go to the statistics and compare. Awake, three minutes versus two hours and 45 minutes. REM sleep, two hours and 49 minutes of the most beautiful REM sleep. Look at these beautiful, look at the structure of this sleep cycle. Look at this structure here. Look at this beautiful sleep cycle structure. Core sleep, four hours and 10 minutes. And the deep sleep, super important, one hour, and 25 minutes of deep sleep versus zero minutes. <sighs> that's, that's all the proof you need right there just to show the difference that CPAP therapy can make to your sleep and your life. Now let's have a look at the oxygen data from his Sleep HQ O2 ring. All right. If you want to pick yourself up a Sleep HQ O2 ring, click the link above and you can check it out. So here we are on Sleep HQ. This is my cloud-based sleep apnea management platform. Checking out Chris's Sleep HQ O2 ring data. We get the blood oxygen levels, the SpO2, the pulse rate, and also movement data, which is really helpful as he's moving around in bed. And have a look at the blood oxygen level drops. They should be nice and steady up at 96, 97, but look where they are. They're down here at 70, way too low. Look at his pulse rate, bumping around up here at 100, 104. And then look at all the movement data here. Now, if we come up to the statistics up here, drops over 4%, 255 times a night. His oxygen levels were dropping 4% or more. Now let's take a look at how the results changed with the first night of CPAP therapy. You ready? Here we go. All right, have a look at the blood oxygen levels. Nice and stable. There is this period here. I'll talk about that in a minute. But look, for the majority of the night, I'll, I'll toggle back again. Look at the difference. Incredible. So this section here in the beginning, I'll explain that. This was Chris's first night of CPAP therapy. And just from experience, I knew he would need a lot of pressure to treat his obstructive apneas. However, I didn't want the ResMed delivering too much pressure because it can cause problems, especially for beginners. So I capped it at 14 and it looks like that was just a little bit too low. He needs just a little bit more, maybe 15 centimeters. And check out the heart rate right here. It's erratic in the beginning associated with the blood oxygen drops. But once they become stable, look at this 97, 97, look at what the heart does. Look at this beautiful drop in heart rate. It's finally resting, 65, 63, 61, 55, we're going to 49, down here at 47. <laughs> Let's compare that prior to CPAP. <clears throat> See how erratic it is throughout the entire night. 
That's the activation of the sympathetic nervous system, the fight or flight response. And all the movement data here in pink, why is there so much movement data? Because he's waking up to breathe. <sighs> That's what's happening. Let's check it with CPAP. Look at this, look at the difference. Hardly any movement. Incredible stuff, there's your proof right there. That is your proof. Get back on CPAP guys. A lot of people who fail the first time around with CPAP normally succeed the second time around or the third time around. So if you have given up, make sure you go back and try again. Jump on Sleep HQ, of course. You have access to this information now and you can see exactly the improvement CPAP therapy can make to your health data right here, but you'll also feel it as well. Thanks for watching, mates. I know the study is confronting, but there's no point in burying your head in the sand and just hoping everything will be okay. You got one chance at this, one life, make the most of it. And if it means you're gonna add 10 years to your life and your chance of survival goes from 55% to 95% over the next 18 years, sleeping with a mask is worth it. I know it's a little bit uncomfortable in the beginning, but once you get used to it, you'll have the best sleep of your life. You'll add 10 years to your life and you'll never look back. Until next time, sleep well, look after your mates, and make every moment count. Cheers. G'day mates. This video is sponsored by Sleep HQ. Upload, review, and share your detailed CPAP reports with anyone from anywhere. Visit sleephq.com and join our free community today.